Understanding your identity, part three. What makes Christianity colorful is when you know who you are. It's the strength, security, and authority of every Christian. You must know who you are for the world to know. In John chapter 8 and verse 25, then said they unto him, Who art thou? <laughs> now listen carefully, people of God. Until you know who you are, where you're from, and what you are worth, your Christianity will not be colorful. You must know who you are, where you are from, and what you are worth. It's very important. You must answer the question of who am I? Where am I from? And what am I worth? Jesus speaking said, I and my father are one. I know where I came from. He said, that is from above is above all. I'm not coming from the earth. They said, are you not the son of the carpenter? He said, no. I and my father are one. John 10, 30. And that which is from above is above what? He said, look, I'm not from this place. I come from heaven. He said, what are you talking about? He knew where he came from. He knew his worth. So nobody could take you for a ride. The devil will never take you for a ride. Shout a better amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Christianity is not religion. It's not a religion. It is not a philosophy. It's not belonging to a church organization. It is the release of God into human vessel. Is Christ coming to dwell in you? Christianity is life. That is what? It's the importation of life into human vessels. New birth is spiritual initiation that reestablishes your divine authority on the earth. A divine nature comes inside you and decides God himself. So here, as if any man being Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. God himself comes to the size of you. That's what makes you a child of God. It's not coming to church. It's been in touch with him. Until you understand your true identity, your Christianity will never be colorful. But the day you understand your identity, your perspective to life will change. Now hear this, people of God. I'll give you the illustration, life story. A lady was flying from Israel to Nigeria and they stopped over in Turkey. And while they stopped over in Turkey, they had to do some things. They went on a pilgrimage. And while in Turkey, they served them very fine food. Wonderful menu. So this old woman from River State, Nigeria, sat somewhere. And watch everybody going to dish you, the buffet, they are just taking quantity as they like. So my mama was wondering and refused to join her to eat. Who are dishing all manner and eating. Then she said, she called one of them and said, my begin. At the point where they were announcing that now it's time for them to leave. She called one of them and said, let me use African colloquial, how much you want to pay? Then humorously, the young man said, Mama, we no pay. As we were waiting, and I didn't say make a job. That means that as we are waiting, this was part of our privilege to eat. He said, Ah, uh -uh. I didn't know that it's free. They were announced. Flight to leave. Ma said, Hey! But what is it? Ignorance. So ignorance. That was a fringe benefit for being on board that flight. Many are born again, but have no understanding of their rise in Christianity. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ignorance is the greatest destroyer of any believer. It's not the devil. Who thinks it's the devil? No, the devil even destroys people through ignorance. Through what? He said, my people are destroyed, not because of the devil. 
lack of so your depth of knowledge determines how outstanding you become in life. So I hear. I said, how do you know your identity? Who are you? I said, number one, you are a spirit. You are what? You are a spirit being. I said, who are you? You are a spirit being. Number two, I said, you possess eternal life. You possess what? Who am I? I possess eternal life. Number three, who am I? I said, you are a lion. You are what? You are a lion. Number four, I said, you are a God. You are what? A God. Now, in this service, who am I? You have the mind of Christ. Who am I? I have the mind of Christ. Now, people of God, hear this and hear me very well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Shall we read the people together? But we have the mind of Christ. What do we have? If you are born again, you don't have an ordinary mind. You have the very mind that is in Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Now listen carefully. You can't carry that mind and the world not mind you. And the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. John 1, 1 to 3. And the word was God. Now look at verse 3 carefully of John 1. Everybody look at verse 3. Let's do it together. All things were made by him. Pause. Who is him? Christ? No, no. That's Jesus. All things were made by who? Jesus. That's Jesus. All things were made by him. In the beginning, the word is Jesus. All things were made by Jesus and without him was not anything made that was what? Who is that? And whose mind do you have? That means you are supposed to be creating like Jesus. I come again. <laughs> we have the mind of who? Christ. All things were made by who? Christ. The world is Christ. And you have his mind. In the beginning, and the word, and the word, all things were made, the word is Christ himself. Is that true? And all things were made by the word. Is that true? Which is him. And that is the mind you and I have. I mean, understand what God is saying. Come. So you have the creative mind of Christ by reason of being born again. Now listen. That mind is super creative. Super what? That's the mind you and I have. So to behave foolishly is an abuse to redemption. There's a wave of creativity in everyone. Everyone. Listen, I'm not blowing my trumpet. I was an average student. I was what? When I became born again, I sat with the book of Daniel Sat with 1 Corinthians 2.16. Asked the Holy Ghost to fire in me an electric brain. I heard Bishop Edekwa's testimony. Where he was sharing it. So I sat there and I said, Lord, I can't have this mind and be an average student. I said, I want an electric brain. A brain that is super creative. Boy, I'm not kidding. There's no field in this world you talk to me, I will not get I went for a course three years ago in the UK. The man who taught me said he has taught professors, he has taught everybody. It was a course that was supposed to take me minimum two years and some days. I understood in three hours. When the man was done, he said, excuse me, who are you? He said, I've taught medical doctors, I've taught professors here. You are the fastest who grasps what I taught. I happen to be a pastor. We are supposed to do it for, I paid heavily for the complete course, but by three hours I was done. So we had nothing to teach again. We don't have an ordinary mind. Redemption enriches you with the mind of Christ. There's a wave of divine creativity in you. Say what I mean, there's a wave. 
So don't allow religion put in bondage. You are not ordinary. You are not what? From today, the mind in you begin to walk. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Now listen. The mind of Christ is the epitome of soundness and excellence. This mind is so sound that when you put it into use, you can't be a failure. And the way many Christians fail, they refuse to use the mind of Christ in them on the earth. Your earthly success is determined by your mind. Hope you know that. So I hear. Are you born again? Are you born again? Divinity has invaded your mind. We have the mind of who? And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is where? Inside your mind. Can you fail? Outlook is, is an abuse for a Christian to copy in an exam. It's an abuse for a Christian to write exam twice. If I was born again, the things I know now, if I was born again when I was in school, nobody would near me. We are on time, you know, we are failing because we are going to practice. If I was born again, do I know Christ now? I won't make any second class offer. It will be first class. Because what you carry is a wave of creativity. Are you going to say that? You do, and from this day, may the mind of Christ be fired with a new life in you. So you now have the capacity to operate in the class of God's wisdom. Now hear this. In Isaiah chapter 11, look at Jesus Christ. Isaiah painted the picture of Jesus in 1 to 3. He said, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall what? The spirit of wisdom, Jesus, and understanding, and the spirit of counsel and mind, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God, and shall make him of what? He said, he will make him of what? Now, and that is what you carry. So that means when they are teaching your fire, your brain should be capped. We don't have, listen, Christianity is not just No! No, it's beyond that. He's saying if you are born again, you have the very mind in Jesus. Can Jesus go for an exam and come a second? Can Jesus be copying, be copying, copying from somebody? In an exam, hall, Jesus will raise his neck and do like this. Can Jesus sort? Sort. Jesus will sort. And that is the mind you and I so we are not supposed to be ordinary. <laughs> oh God of heaven. There's a deposit inside you waiting for expression. It is time to stir it up. And from this day, the mind of Christ that you carry will begin to bring a revolution on the earth. <laughs> you know what God said in Proverbs 8? Talking about the wisdom of God, which is where the mind is the seat of wisdom. 12, 15 to 18 and 21. Look at him. He said, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. And I find that knowledge of witty worth. So, with this mind, we should be inventors. We should be what? That is, we sit like this and begin to invent things. Things that don't exist. We just, look, you don't need to copy. You just stay like this and the creative mind in you will just come alive. And you begin to invent the things that are not in existence. Are you going to understand? From today, that's how it will be. He said, by me, kings reign. And princes, what? The creatures. That we reign by this mind wisdom. He said, and by me, princes rule. And nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. So it doesn't just work. You have to love it. And those that seek me, Elisha, what? When you are born again, be seeking for wisdom. Be seeking for creativity. Riches are honor with me. So your money you're looking for is where? See where money is. 
Riches is not in countries. Riches is here. See where riches is. Where is riches? See where? Listen, you can't take an alligator from Nigeria to UK because crocodile. Riches is here. Riches is not in country. See where wealth is. Wealth is man's capacity to think. A wise man said. Wealth is here. See where wealth is. Point here. Where is wealth? Here. It's in the mind. Wealth is not in nation. No! But it is not nation. It's here. So stop run. It's an abuse to redemption for a Christian to go and be running to a nation because things are not working where you are. No, put your mind to use. You are born again. Calm down and put your mind. Don't run to a nation. I've seen people mess up their destinies in the name of traveling abroad. Sit down, except God tells you, be free. But to go away because things are not working, your mind is suspended. When you put this mind to use, things work anywhere. God is no respecter. In every nation, in every world, who's ever fears him? He didn't say in every, in every nation. That's what I saw in my Bible. God, I perceive, God, there's no difference between you and the Greek. Is that your Bible? But put your mind to use. Put this mind to use. It's right here. When you are born, riches are where? In the mind. That's what the riches and what? Honor, I would mean. Yeah, durable riches, well, that can stand the test of time. Not your rich today, you're broke tomorrow. You'll be crooked, you won't get money and be doing bad things. You'll be killing people to get money. 21. He said that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I'll fill their treasures. Shout hallelujah. So your mind came alive when you came in contact with Jesus. Now it is your responsibility. It's your what? To renew that mind through encounters with knowledge. With what? You have to constantly update your mind. He said, don't be conformed to it, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12 verse 2. Study to show yourself what? A workman that needed not to be Now listen. You have the mind of Christ, but it's tied up to studies. Through what? Now listen. This is where many miss it. We have the creator's mind, but we don't study. Study is not needed for exams. That's where we miss it. It is not even, it is taxing your brain productively to get results. Listen. You don't start, studying for exams is not intelligence. It's not what? That is your, that is education. You are school. School is different from even education. Studying is a lifestyle. Is it what? That is, Daniel said, Daniel was given the spirit of wisdom. But he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. He steered of his mind. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. So you stare, Jesus stood up to read in the temple. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? Luke chapter 4 verse 16. As his custom was, he stood up to read. So you must read to stare up this mind. Are you hearing me, brother? You have it. Not that you have it. It's you. Now stare it up. By, stare it up by, by what? Reading. Are you getting me, sir? You stare your mind. 2 Timothy 2 15. Study to show thyself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Seven, uh, Timothy 4, 13 and 15. The cloak that I left at us with capers. When thou comest, bring with thee and the books and the what? But especially departments, my notes. I make notes. He said, everything I have, bring it. I have made notes. I have made what? When I want to prepare for a message, no message I'll prepare for that I will not read minimum eight books. Before I will prepare any message, minimum is eight books. You will see books on my table, think I'm going for research. I was reading slowly, and I saw myself, I said, no, this is not how I'll be able to read. I had to go for a course to read fast, because there's no way you can read eight books in a few hours. You don't say you're a pastor and just come on the altar. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. 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 I say we are going soon. Amen. Amen. Did you come to this church because of only miracles? Huh? No way. If it's only miracles, many of you will have left this church. It's the teaching. You come today, the food today is different from next week. Every day I give you a new menu. True? 
They don't go to a restaurant because of beauty. They go to a restaurant because of menu. Do you go to any restaurant because of the fine glass? He said, that place better food though. Stay your mind. Stay what? To be creative. So to be dull is an abuse to redemption. Is what? It is time to utilize the creator's ability in my mind. Say so. And I will stir them up. In the name of Jesus. I have what? I have what? It is there. Now stir it up. To become creative. To become what? Super. Look, nobody should be looking for a job as a believer. We should create jobs. Our problem is that we don't use here. Hey, let, let me tell you something very practical. When you have challenge, say you through, where do you think outside before you think here? Who will I meet? Who will borrow me? Who will help me? Who will solve it? Yet, the answer is here. You have not gone anywhere to say, what do I do? When any challenge comes, what do you do first? Who will I meet? Who will borrow me? Who will help me? You have not said, what do I do? <laughs> At least you have say, what do I do? First, it, who will help me? Who will borrow me? Which company will I go for loan? I have not taken the first loan. Will not take till Jesus comes. Leave loan, no. <laughs> Is it loan? Hmm. If you know what I know, you will take loan. You say, what if I get project? Would I finance it? Find out from me how to finance project. I'll tell you. The projects we have, how do we finance them? If Jesus was to be that project, will he borrow? He said, God will say, thou shall not borrow. Borrow is not a sin, but it's a weight. Let me not go there. That, he said, thou shall lend to nations. Thou shall not borrow. Can God give you an instruction that he knows, does not have an answer? For him to say, thou shall not borrow. It means thou has provided. Your duty is to tax your brain to know where the provision is. He said you shall learn to what? Borrowing is not a sin. Don't misquote me. But it's a weight. I'm not owing nobody. So can you shout at me? If I'm owing you, raise your hand. I've never owed as a pastor. Not that I owed and I came out of debt. I've never owed. We never owed to Jesus. I know too much to owe. If you know what I know, you won't owe. All of you owe it. You don't know it. Don't kill yourself. Many of you are under pressure because you are not using the creative mind of Christ. Every pressure is an indication you are not using your creative mind of Christ. There is a size for you. Don't wear a size coat. You fold the hand, you can't fold the back. There is a wig of 2,000. There's a week of 300,000. There's a week of one point something million. We are the one your size can buy. Don't look at one sister and say, I like a week. There's Orlandis of 50,000. There's a, a car of 1,005. Buy your 1,005, sew it well, and move your way. Don't kill yourself. Use the mind of Christ. Life is in phases. Men are in size. Don't wear an oversized shoe. You can pad it, but oversized cap, it will cover your face. <laughs> <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Lift your hand and say, Father, I have it already. I, have it. I pray that it comes alive. Go ahead and pray for yourself. The mind of Christ in me come alive in the name of Jesus. The mind of Christ in me come alive in the name of Jesus. I have the mind of Christ. Let the mind that is in me come alive in the name of Jesus. The mind of Christ come alive in me. Thank you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. 